Hi again, it's Jason from Fraser Valley Rose Farm and I'm doing a video now on underbench heating. This feels like full circle to me, like deja vu, because the very first video on my channel was also underbench heating. That was a small project to help me get some space for propagation. This is intended to help my plants to overwinter. I don't have any snow up on those hills yet, but it will be here within a couple of weeks. And so I'm trying to get some winter protection because I've propagated more roses than ever and I want to make sure I can get them through to the spring. Let me show you what I have on the go. These are the benches where I intend to overwinter my roses and these are the roses themselves. I've actually pulled them off the benches to complete the project. But the thing to know about these young roses is that even though I've had a great success propagating them, they are quite young still. Their little roots could be susceptible to freezing temperatures or in this climate we may get once or twice a year some cold temperatures that are well below freezing and that's what I'm worried about. So to create some protection for that, if you look at the pipe that I've placed underneath this bench and it runs all the way down to the far end in a U shape. It's a three inch PVC pipe, sort of a thin wall sewer pipe thing, not the most expensive stuff. And we've wrapped it in this heating cable. And the heating cable is the kind of thing that you would use for lower roofs and gutters to stop from ice dams happening. So it is safe for use in moist areas and it is safe to use up against flammable structures like the roof of your house. And that's one of the reasons why I chose it is that I think it uh, isn't custom made for this purpose, but it could be useful for some of the similar kinds of things. Just to monitor the amount of water that I have in the pipe, I've left this end open. You can see it's fairly low there, but you know what? I'm gonna plug this in right now and show you something. And here with just about 15 minutes of the heating cable being turned on, you can see that the level of water has risen almost up to the rim, might even get there if I leave it long enough. And I also wanted to show you over here, sorry, I'm gonna focus in, that when I put my hand on here, I can definitely feel just a strong radiant heat coming from the wire itself, from the, uh, from the cable, but the water itself and the pipe remains relatively cool. I kind of like that moderating effect of having the water in there. The water itself, we will be treating with a little bit of antifreeze, just as a matter of safety, to try to keep it from freezing, just in case the cable system goes down uh, and we don't, uh, we don't have heat going into it, or if the cold overwhelms it, I don't want to destroy the piping there. Just one other quick thing about the safety of this cable is, the it's actually meant for moist locations, it's meant not to reach a temperature to burn things. so. I'm not that worried about that end of it, but the one caution it did say is don't overlap it with itself. So don't wind the wire uh, over top of itself because the wire against itself will release enough heat to melt the casing. So you can see that all the way along here, we've gone one direction and just wound around with three to four inches between the, uh, the, the winds on the wire, just so that we don't accidentally wind that over itself and cause it to melt. The final version of this bench that I'm going to show you, and I'll show you the measurements of the temperature as well, will have a plastic skirt placed over the top of the bench and down the sides to try to keep some of the heated air underneath the bench. So I want to talk to you about some of my design considerations for why I chose to go with the plastic pipe, the heated cable wrap, and how that's going to work underneath the table. First of all, there's lots of ways to get heat underneath the bench. Uh, I kind of discounted anything that had to do with combustion. I didn't want to have a gas source in here. So electrical heating was going to be my choice, but you can choose electrical block heaters. I've seen people use uh, lighting, so they would string just, uh, just string lights underneath a bench. I've seen people use uh, ceramic bulbs. So there's lots and lots of different ways to introduce heat underneath a bench using electricity. The reason I chose to go with the pipe filled with water and the heating cable, well, there's a few of them. First of all, I wanted to be able to introduce a fair amount of electricity all in one shot and fairly evenly across the entire outside perimeter of the table. 
and the U-shaped PVC seemed like the way to do that to me. Now, we get sometimes sudden deep cold. It isn't very frequent in our climate, but what I wanted to have in there was a way to hold the temperature of the water inside of that pipe up to around four or five degrees Celsius, which would be somewhere around 40 degrees Fahrenheit. And that gives it a bit of a buffer, a bit of a, a, a thermal mass that if we had a sudden deep cold overnight, that it isn't playing catch up, that water can help to hold some of the heat that it's absorbed from that, uh, from that wrap, and then can also help to release that underneath the bench and keep the temperature more stable uh, over, again, a fairly wide area. So that was the thinking behind the PVC pipe. Now, let me show you here, I'm gonna throw up a graphic that I can, is that, uh, and I've said this before, that heat only moves in a few small different ways. It, it, it can be narrowed down into three different ways. Uh, it can move by radiation, uh, conduction, or convection. In this case, most of the heat that I'm trying to move in this, in this bench is being moved by convection. It's that the air directly around those PVC pipes will be gently heated by uh, the differential in temperature from the heating cables and the water, and then will slowly move upwards to the bottom of the bench, where it will encounter the bottoms of the plants and the plastic film that separates it from the bottom of the plants. It will lose its energy to those plants and then it will cool down and then sink to the bottom of the, uh, of the air uh, down to the floor underneath these benches. And then, of course, the more air will be heated by the, by the pipes and that will replace it up above. So that's the goal here. And that's the reason why I have, why I'm placing this plastic or poly skirt around the bench is so that the air doesn't just go up through the cracks and escape up into the greenhouse. Uh, it doesn't go around from the bottom and escape out the sides. So it's more or less just to trap that air underneath and to keep it convecting and flowing and releasing that heat directly where I need it, right at the base of those plants. And as you can see, we've put a plastic skirt underneath this bench all the way to the floor on all four sides just to trap that heat underneath and we put the plants up on the bench. Now let's see how it's performing temperature wise. Let's sneak in here where I have a thermometer set up. And the numbers you're going to see on there, the numbers at the bottom of the screen, 64 degrees Fahrenheit, is the temperature on this bench. The top numbers are rotating between two remote sensors. One is outside at 54, and the other one is inside the greenhouse at 58. So all told, between outside and on this bench, there's about a 10 degree differential. And between this bench and not on this bench, but still in the greenhouse, there's about a six degree differential. That's enough to make a difference in the growth rate of the plants, which really isn't my primary goal. My primary goal is to protect them over the winter. And we're gonna see on that, the results will have to come when I have those uh, situations where it's going to be freezing nights and warmer days and see how well this bench does to hold that kind of temperature. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions about this project or any other greenhouse questions, just drop those into the comments below the video and thanks so much for watching.